Hey everybody, it's Michelle. I'm just uh, reaching out to you guys to talk about something that I, uh, you know, something that came to mind this morning during my own, like, what do you call it, meditation, my own serene space. Uh, It was a concept called impersonal vulnerability. Uh, A guy by the name of Dr. Philip Zimbardo is a person that coined that phrase. Um, He's responsible for a few things, being the voice in the face of contemporary psychology. He has a PBS TV series, Discovering Psychology, uh, in his media uh, appearances. So he's responsible for several books and also the standard, I'm sorry, the Stanford Prison Experiment. So he's got like uh, quite a few resources uh, underneath his belt, obviously, but personal vulnerability really stood out to me because it's a really important concept that I think we don't talk about a lot because this is the first time I'd ever heard of it, right? So as soon as I hear about something, I'm like, oh, yes, oh my God. It's something new. What is it? Literally, that's what I do on the inside when I see a new concept or a new theory that I've never heard of. I get excited. Um, but personal invulnerability was, was pretty, pretty impactful for me when I read about it. The word invulnerable means incapable of being wounded, injured, or harmed, um, or immune to or proof against attack. Now, I think there are two ways that this could go. You could have a person that's constantly like, oh, no one can ever stop me. No one can ever make me. Mm. I think that's a narcissistic um, I guess way of being invulnerable. So if you feel like you can never be hurt and nothing could ever affect you then yes, that's narcissistic, I believe. (laughs) Because guess what? Somebody will, everyone will actually at some point or another. Now, the other way that you could suffer from personal invulnerability is this. You could be a high-level thinker as Mr. (laughs) Zambardo says. Uh, You could be a high-level thinker and... Because of that, because you feel like the people around you are safe, you might overlook some red flags from people that don't have your best interest at heart. Because guess what? Not everybody will have your best interest at heart. Most of the time, 99.999% of people won't. I believe from my own experiences and from what I've seen and other people's experiences as well is that folks definitely uh, are self-motivated initially. If something works out for them and it can work out for someone else, then, you know, most of the time people are really, 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 you know, stuck on that. Well, if it's not going to do me any good, then why should I do it, right? However, you've got the people that really just like to help others, um, people that, are fairly optimistic about most things and that can actually walk in trust. Not a lot of people nowadays uh, know how to exist in a trusting environment. Nobody trusts anyone anymore. And, you know, sometimes rightfully so. Sometimes people are just, you know, people are going to be people. But the more I found myself trying to define it, the more stress I, I had. So personal invulnerability. I think that a person can be personally invulnerable with family members because they don't think that that family member or family members would ever hurt them. That's personal invulnerability. They absolutely will. They absolutely can. And I think Western tradition mostly, and it's probably even worse in Eastern tradition, where you're taught to forgive people. You're taught to continue to forgive. Like, 
if you get smacked on the face one time, you can, you know, turn the other cheek 70 times seven, right? That's what, that's Bible. That's Bible. Um, however, personal invulnerability happens also when you put a certain tradition before your reality. If I'm always supposed to do this because I'm told to, because that's the only way that it's always ever been done and it's wearing me down and it's damaging me in a way, am I supposed to continue that tradition? Right? This is one of the hardest things that I think I ever have to struggle with. Like I struggle with a lot of that. Like I just want to do the right thing. I just want to make sure that, I'm not in a position where I'm hurting somebody or where I can be perceived to hurt someone. So for me, I know growing up in the black church and in a black community, you're always told to forgive forgiveness. You can't even pray if you don't forgive. And I find that to be very, very, very convoluted. I I find it to be convoluted because of course I can't pray if I'm upset about something. Um, of course I can't pray if one thing or one situation or one person is constantly on my mind. You can't be free to actually look at the situation. So the, the thing is this. I, I, I went out of town this weekend, right? So it, it said on the listing it, it was a barn. Okay, I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to go stay in a barn for the weekend. No, but, but it was really nice on the inside. Um, while I was inside of it, I didn't know what was going on or where I was. I didn't think about it being a barn. I, it wasn't a barn to me. It was just a house. But when I went outside of it, I was able to see more clear the actual construct of the building. So... When it comes to forgiveness, I think that we are best, um, our best selves when we include someone that can help us through our, uh, uh, our biases, through the things that, that create contention within our minds and, and, you know what I'm saying, discord. Identifying the outside of a situation because you can't properly, you can't properly uh, define something if you're in it, if you're immersed in it, if you're exposed to it in a way that someone who can make an objective and clear decision outside of the situation could, just like the barn. You know what I'm saying? It looked like a barn on the outside, but on the inside, it didn't look like it didn't look that way. You know, you could be doing things for your family and friends and then, you know, they just keep taking and taking and taking and and grinding down on everything that is good in you just to take it out and just to leave you the way you know, depleted. That That's not OK. You have to step outside of the situation. And it's so crazy because I believe that we can be stressed out about things we don't even know we're stressed out about. We can continue to have these feelings of anxiety inside of the house, inside of the barn, and not even really be able to objectively identify that we are stressed. That's called, I believe, personal invulnerability. It was such a powerful concept because, listen, you got folk that are dying of heart attacks, folks that's got high blood pressure, folks that's got diseases that are developing on the inside because they've been inside the house for so long, they can't see that they're being abused. Man. And then you got to be careful for the people that are inside the house with you that only continue to validate you so that they can abuse you because that's the only way that they'll ever be able to accept you. People who constantly abuse you and who actually become sustained off that abuse are people that will never own up to what they're doing because they're so insecure about around you, about you and around you that they have to like verbally abuse you for them to feel like they're, they stood up a little bit around you. Sometimes people, they harp on you. They push down on you on your feelings. They push down on what you have to say. And, 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 and all that because they're insecure around you, right? You ever argue with somebody about something that really, really hurt you? 
and you were vulnerable with that person thinking, oh my God, I can be vulnerable with this person. They're going to accept me and not everybody will. No one owes you that, but you do owe yourself some protection. You do owe yourself some type of uh, standard so that if you are in fact inside of a situation that you can't come out of and see what it actually really is or to clearly define it, you've got to set up boundaries around yourself. Mm, Maybe I won't talk to this person as much anymore about my own issues because I can't, you know, nothing feeds me about this person. You've got to take that inventory. You got to start looking at people in relationships and jobs and situations. You're like, hmm, what is this feeding me? What is it giving me? Even rotors need to be changed at some point. And rotors are the things on, on your wheel that grinds down over time because you're carrying the weight of so much, but you're still grinding while you're carrying that weight that others press down on you, uh, uh, not, a, not, let a look, not even talking about your own weight, right? It, it's like we're constantly, especially women, especially black women, we're constantly made to stay there, to not move, not say nothing, don't complain, stop crying. You don't need to talk about this. You just meant to stay there and take it. No, no. We cannot afford to allow ourselves to be uh, uh, taken advantage of the way we've been taken advantage of. We cannot allow ourselves to continue to not define the toxic situations that are causing us harm emotionally, physically, and mentally. Whew, that's a word for me. It's blessing my soul. Seriously, that's time out. For allowing people, and it's it's like it's like God showed me some people in in my life in the spirit, and I just saw them constantly poking, right? Constantly making impact, but never recovering. Constantly taking, constantly using me as a stopping fo- point for their depression. Constantly using me as a part of, of their life that could that or the person. In their life that they can always come to for encouragement, but they don't ever give it themselves. <sighs> That's not healthy. And, you know, as soon as you step back, as soon as you say, hey, I don't like this behavior, I don't like this treatment, then, you know, you got to pay attention to how people respond to your vulnerability as well. If I say, hey, this hurts me, and the person does not respond in empathy, move away from that person. If you say, hey, I've got, a, uh, I've got an issue, and then they constantly like attack you with things that will belittle you or things that they think was wrong or things that they've he- had, had pent up for so long, that's not a person that's investing in you at all. Got to learn how to create standards. Hey, if they do this, 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 and this, then I can give them access to this, 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 and this. If they don't do this, 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 bye. Like, no, you, and again, you've got to know who you are. You've got to value yourself enough to say, hey, I'm a garden. Mm, I might be messy. I might have a lot of things around me, a lot of weeds, a lot of even, you know, toxic things on my own that I've got to work out. But again, this is my garden. This is me. If God, if God himself loves to spend time with me, why wouldn't other people? Right. Why would not be that uh, 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 precious if you're not precious to someone, if they don't value you as a person, you are, you don't have to expose all of you to that person just because you care about them or just because you love them or even just because they need you. Hmm. Watch out for the manipulative ones. Oh, so you going, oh, so, but you did, oh, so this how it's going to be? Yes. Absolutely. You're not going to kill me. You're not going to continue to grind. You're not going to continue to take and, and, and pull and never replenish. No. I refuse to be that person ever again. 
I understand now what God was trying to tell me through this. Hey, Michelle, you've got to assess everyone as having uh, or, or to assess their level of capacity to call you pain of their uh, of their level of uh, influence over your life and over your heart and over your mind. And you've got to set parameters in the event that they are not capable of loving you the way you need to be loved. I'm not saying that you have to, you know, let everybody go, but I'm telling y'all my cutoff game is strong. It's like Mr. T strong and I'm still working on that. Ooh, Lord help me. But, (laughs) and, and then again, you know, I I was talking to this about, I was talking to my therapist about this. Is it really, you know, my cutoff game? Is it too strong or am I just really now starting to understand how much of a responsibility it is for me to keep my space peaceful? Food for thought. Think about that. So anyway, that's what I got for today. Find some standards. Everybody can hurt you. Everyone will. And I think that is inevitable. But we we can no longer uh, afford to be personally or, or to have any type of personal invulnerability towards anything or anyone. The city that is not prepared for an attack is the city that is destroyed eventually. Which will you be? Have a good day.